It's true that Twitter, as you've heard already, does really allow you to build buzz around events, get people interested, bring people to places in the real world as well. And there's so many of you here, I wondered whether any of you saw this. I mean, this is a pretty remarkable thing. I was browsing through yesterday and noticed a very famous communicator <laughs> had mentioned how important this is. Anyone see this? Anyone see this? Oh, shut up, you buttery polecat. <laughs> Buttery polecat. That's amazing, isn't it? Well, I don't know what it means. Um, yeah, you, you didn't see this because I made this up yesterday. It, it, it takes about, without any fancy Photoshop work, it takes about 30 seconds to manipulate the HTML behind a tweet. I'll show anyone who wants to do it later. Be, be careful with this power. <laughs> um, and simply change it and screen grab it and then lie to everybody about what people have been tweeting. Um, that's really my message running through all of this, which is it's an inc social media is an incredible source of insight, actually, about what people are saying, what they're thinking, what they're doing. And I think it's, very, it's going to be a, an increasingly important one for for think tanks to use, but it is incredibly prone to misinterpretation, misleading data, inaccurate findings. What was interesting about the English Defence League was that most of their activity was taking place online. It was all taking place on either the English Defence League open forum or on their quickly growing at the time Facebook page. And I thought, well, this is quite an interesting way of trying to understand the good. Let's see what they're talking about online. Because one of the big questions was, what's the relationship between all this noise we hear on Facebook from the English Defence League and what we see on Saturdays when they go out to demonstrate? And I set out to try to understand that. And I thought, well, how can I, how can I collect some data about the English Defence League? They're not usually that interested in, interested in responding to surveys. You can't... It's quite difficult to go in there and do ethnographic work on them. Um, you certainly can't target them through traditional population level survey data methods. I thought, well, what about if I try to go onto Facebook and target them to fill in a survey through Facebook? The demographics of Twitter users are changing constantly and becoming more and more representative of society. It's an increasingly useful and interesting way to gauge a book, a sort of gauge public opinion, and there's a lot of work being done by us and by others about how you can rigorously and robustly gauge opinion and attitude from Twitter data sets. One of the reasons this is so exciting is that access to Twitter's what's called application programming interface, which is the way you ask Twitter to give you data, is free. Uh, if you want access to 1% of all the tweets that are put out every day through the API, you need to work in a computer program, uh, it doesn't cost you anything. So you have at your disposal millions of pieces of data freely available of the social world laughing, talking, chattering, arguing, discussing.